Hello, my name is Wayne Sloda, and I am the Inkjet Marketing Product Manager for OSE North America. I would like to introduce to you for the first time the OSE ColorStream 3500 end-to-end -end full color inkjet printing solution. The ColorStream 3500 complements our extensive and industry-leading Jetstream family of high-speed continuous feed inkjet printers, which include the compact series, the dual series, and the wide series. Before we give you a detailed demonstration on the ColorStream 3500, I would like to introduce a special guest of ours, Mr. Thomas Hoffman, who is the international product manager from our factory in Poing, Germany. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Thomas. Thomas, a good starting point might be to explain to everyone why we developed the ColorStream 3500. That's a good point because, well, we already have the market leading portfolio of high volume continuous feed full color engines. Still, we felt we lack something. We lack a solution that helps our existing customers that use a monochrome continuous feed system to migrate to the full color world. They still needed something that fits into a data center and they wanted to have an efficient solution to get in a productive way into Inkjet. The ColorStream 3500 is only part of the end-to-end -end solution. We have on the front end our industry-leading Prisma production server that essentially allows us to run any standard data stream or PDL out there in the marketplace today very efficiently. That's yeah. absolutely true. I think for that it would be great to ask a specialist. Let me introduce to you a real specialist on software and workflows, Edward Jensen. Vice President of Technology and Software Support. Edward, can you explain me a little bit what makes the ColorStream 3500 to a real end-to-end -end solution? Something about workflow and automation? Uh, yes, absolutely, Thomas. Uh, when it comes to Prisma Production, which is the primary software product in our, our, our portfolio around production printing, uh, the very important thing uh, is to manage data, rapidly prepare it, and deliver it to the engine at print speed without long delays in upfront processing. So Prisma Production is specifically designed to now not only handle black and white workflows, but also color workflows, and automate those tasks and those processes and prepare that data with the right color intent to deliver it to the engine at print time and at rated speed. So you also do all the color management based on the Prisma workflows? Uh, absolutely, uh, within Prisma Production, uh, in the latest release, version 404, uh, we very specifically function color management as a pre-flighting, pre-processing step. So as data comes in, rules can be written and created, uh, and the data can be reacted to in very specific fashions to normalize that data, prepare that data, and deliver it to the engine so that the output looks as it was intended to look from a color perspective. So basically with the Prisma production, you get all the data to the printer, but what happens there at the printer? What, what happens in the controller? Well, that's one of the beautiful things. Uh, within the, the entire print family, uh, we've always used the same controller technology, the SRA controller. Uh, and in the, in the Jetstream and ColorStream families, we have the SRA MP, which is really a massively parallel version of that controller. And what it does is it leverages a, a basically a blade system to rapidly prepare that data and deliver it to the engine. Uh, but one of the unique competitive advantages that we have is in PDF workflows, we can actually take those PDFs and instead of building large RIP farms on the front side of the process with long print delays, we can deliver those PDFs as containerized objects to the engine and they're ripped at print speed. A tremendous advantage over most of the competition. So RIP at print speed with a native PDF RIP? Yes, absolutely. It's the Adobe RIP engine. It's incorporated within the SRA controller. And there's ap abs uh, actually parallel Adobe RIPs in place. Another beautiful thing about that is our tools upstream can remove ICC profiles uh, and prepare those PDFs so that they have the correct uh, rendering intent of the target device. And we do that with late binding at the engine. So basically with the color stream, the SRA MP, and the Prisma workflow, you have a real total package for any kind of needs for applications with full color. Absolutely. And then one of the key things that we've done is as Prisma was designed initially, you can go in with a very small system and then that system scales with your infrastructure. So as more color streams, jet streams, or other vendor devices are put in place, uh, Prisma is the output management system that controls all of those. 
uh, and you scale the system and leverage your existing investment. So you can grow with your business? Absolutely. Perfect. Ed, thank you for that insight into the SRA, into the Prisma and all the color management we have. Thank you, Thomas. The OC Color Stream 3500 Unwinder, that's where it all begins. The Unwinder, well, it comes with the color stream at all times. It's an integral part of the solution. That's also why you see it's in the design of the printer itself. So Thomas, you mentioned that it was an integral piece. Why is it, is it included with every print engine? It always comes with the print engine because it's just perfectly suited to support the color stream 3500. And why is that? Is there a special uh, connection between the unwinder and the print engine? It is, Wayne. It already feeds the paper into the printer with a tight web paper transport. That's quite important for the system. And on the unwinder, what is the maximum paper width um, that the, the unwinder can handle? The maximum paper width is just like for the printer, 21.25 inches. 21.25 inches. Exactly. Just that little bit more than any other unwinder currently available can offer you. And it's fully integrated, so the unwinder and the print engine act as one. They to act maintain as one. that tight web True. required for optimal print quality. They not only act as one, they really communicate when starting to print. That means the unwinder, in the same second as the printer itself, starts moving the paper. And only by that you can get the full print quality out of the Digidot heads that the color stream can offer. Very good. So let's take it from there into the printer. Great. Coming from the OC Color Stream 3500 Unwinder, we first pass a sticky roller before we enter into the marking unit. That sticky roller is quite important because it takes away the paper dust from the surface of the paper and ensures that we do not have the dust inside of the actual marking unit. Welcome to the heart of the OC Color Stream 3500. This is where the actual printing takes place. But before we start printing, we have key things inside of the color stream. First element is a friction brake. After feeding in the paper, we go around this friction brake in the printer. So Thomas, why do we need that? What's the purpose of the friction brake? When the friction brake is an integral part that's very important because it ensures that throughout the whole printer, the paper is always with the same tension. And that tension is essential below the print heads where you need to have a 90 degree angle to fire on. Only this way we can get the 600 dpi resolution to look like 1200 dpi in photos and images with the multi-level capability. From there, we go to the most important part of the color stream paper transport. The most important part looks quite small, this encoder here, but it is the secret behind the key USP of the color stream, the secret behind printing in speed ramps and an actual print pause. Nobody else could do that before. So Thomas, this allows us to print and generate or start printing from the first page and therefore not generate paper waste until we're up to speed. Absolutely true. And the same for when we're slowing down. We're Absolutely. printing while we're slowing down as well. That's right. And that's also very important because our customers told us one thing. We need to be sustainable. We don't want to waste trees. We don't want to throw away money for paper. And we want to be able to make a print pause. When you look below the hats, you will realize the paper speeds down and stops in the middle of the image. Have you seen that before in drop on demand piezo electric ink chip printing? No, I have not. So let's prove that we can continue without paper waste from there. Look at that. Continue printing just where it was. So it continued where it left off without any waste paper in between. That makes that printer highly efficient. I think the most efficient drop on demand piezo electric printer that you can get. And it makes it behave like a toner based system. Wayne, you've been the product manager for the 7,000 and 8,000 various stream families. Yes. What do you say? Isn't that just like the old systems? Absolutely. But before we go to the printing, let me show you one element which the offset world really knows. That's what we call a web guide. So this is critical for paper registration? That is critical for paper registration and for one important thing. I told you the unwinder supports the paper width of 21.25 inches. Yes. Actually, that's also the print width, so we print full bleed. So you need to have your paper in the right position, and that's what the web guide does. So that, I would think that's especially important for full color printing. For full color printing, color to color registration, yes. and front to back registration, as we needed in a twin solution, right. that's crucial. 
And then I noticed, Thomas, that we have an identical unit in the second engine of the twin. That is right. So that allows us uh, to have identical print quality on the front side and on the back side. Absolutely true. That's what the customers need. Yes. Very good. This part ensures that we print at the perfect right position. So why don't we jump directly into the printing part? It's a four color configuration. So black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. I noticed there are two empty slots. Are there plans to uh, add additional colors? This is the spot where you will get the micro ink for check printing and for ne other negotiable documents in the US market and other parts of the world. Micro will be an incorporated part of the system that will include a special micro inkjet ink. That's right. And it will only be used for the micro line, meaning only for that part where you need it, you get this ink. Okay. And you've got an additional spot. Well, what would you think of? some custom color inks that uh, can be used for spot color. For instance, if a particular client has a particular shade of color they would like to reproduce that's outside the CMY color gamut, um, like with our predecessor models, we can, I'm guessing, we can blend inks and try and develop or match that color. That's right. That's a spot color. If you want to have something outside of the color gamut, but that also means you can create specific two-color solutions using only black and a spot color if you need that. Okay. So you've got the full flexibility from anywhere between a one-color solution, a two-color solution, a four-color solution, all the way up to six-color printing, all inside one engine, and all feel upgradable. So Thomas, let me see if I have this correct. If a, if a customer of ours wants to print two over two, say black and blue on both sides, then how would that be achieved in the Color Stream 3500? You would use the monochrome hat, and you would add one ah, of the spot color hats okay. and get a real two color solution like you okay. know it from, for example, the Color Stream 10,000 okay. Flex. So then the other heads will not be used, and of course we will uh, charge accordingly for two over two rather than, say, full color, full color click. That is perfectly right. Talking about not being used, Wayne, that's something which I also want to add something to. You know what happens to inkjet printers that are not the Colorstream 3500 when you print for a very, very long time black and white only? The other heads, the cyan yellow magenta heads, dry out because they're exposed and they're not printing. So the ink just dries on the heads. Exactly. What we do with the Colorstream 3500, well, we only activate the heads we need. It's a little bit comparable to a pen. So if we only want to print a black and white document, we use what we call the head safe technology. Cyan, magenta, and yellow will basically pick up the perch caps. So it's comparable if you don't use a pen, you just close it, and will remain in the parking position. That means they can't dry out. What you're saying is that if the customer is running a monochrome black only job and for instance if they are printing 50 rolls of the black only job then they want to switch to a full color job how long will that take before they're ready to print from going from a black and white to a full color job it will always only take you three to five minutes three to five minutes so three to five minutes and if you compare that to other systems well there it takes you an almost a full hour of manual cleaning that means the operator not being available for other work, the system not being available for printing. So we cut that down from one hour to five minutes. What do you say to that? That's excellent. That's an excellent productivity boost. And that's also what we wanted to have because the color stream, it's a migration to color system. Perfect to get from black and white to full color. Very good. So that's also where all the printing took place. Talking about the printing, you know the digital hats that we use here, do you? I believe they're the same uh, proven, production proven uh, inkjet heads that are used in our jet stream family. Perfectly right. I mean, they are basically the digital heads that you know from the jet stream family. That means they give you outstanding lifetime and they give you the multi-level capability. That means you have three different droplet sizes and that means you can get really 1200 dpi look and feel for photos, half tones and all these details you want to reproduce in pictures. My understanding also, Thomas, is that the inkjet heads are no longer measured, the lifetime of the heads are no longer measured 
in hours, they're measured in years. So we expect them to last at least two, two and a half years in the field in normal considerations. And the heads would be covered under an OSE service agreement, for instance. Good that you mentioned that. As those heads last so very long, we decided to usually have a normal service contract, as you know it from the very stream family, meaning a click charge. And our service technicians will basically come to your place and exchange it when they need to be exchanged. Yeah. I mean, those are industrial hats. Your operators will not get the experience to exchange them themselves, and we want them to be perfectly adjusted when you exchange them. And how long will it take an OSE technician to replace a head? The replacement? Well, first screwdriver adjustment, taking it out, and then readjusting it to full quality. That window, maximum an hour. One hour? Maximum an Very hour. Very good. So that's what we regard as high efficiency, productivity, and quality, all coming out of one system. Not to mention reliability. That is so true. So why don't you show us a little bit about the solidity of our fusing, of our drying technology, and also the importance of data integrity. Sure. Let's go there. Okay. Thomas, I'd like to take us through the next step after the imaging process. One thing I saw already, what's that there in the back, that light point? The sensor, this is yeah. um, a DI sensor, it's a data integrity sensor. It's an OSE patented and proprietary method of ensuring front to back data integrity. So especially for printing builds transaction, you can Absolutely. be sure front and back match. That's Absolutely, good. it's very important, not only in the transactional world, but for book printing, you wanna make sure that Thomas's information is on the front and Thomas's is on the back. So right after the imaging and before drying, we put very tiny, discrete marks, and we the, uh, the way the system works is that the first print engine prints a mark, actually prints four marks, prints a black, cyan, magenta, and magenta and yellow mark. We then send the paper to the second printer. We print identical marks in printer two, and then read those marks with a different sensor, same type of DI, data integrity sensor, in printer two, and compare the marks. Okay. And if the marks don't match, the printer stops and generates a message for the operator to check the print alignment. From right. the DI sensor, then we have to dry the sheet, dry oh, the okay. ink to the sheet, and we've incorporated uh, two heating saddles that come from two predecessor models, the very 7000 and 8000. They're reliable, long life, zero maintenance heat saddles that essentially the paper, the back of the paper, rides over the heat saddle and dries the ink to the paper. And the temperatures of the heat saddles are adjustable by the operator. So for instance, if you're running a very lightweight paper, we might want to turn the temperature of the heat saddles down a little bit to prevent a lot of curling of the lightweight paper. At the same time, if we have a very heavy sheet, we might want to increase the temperature to ensure that we get proper ink drying. So lots of flexibility from an operator standpoint with temperatures of the heating saddles. So very broad media range we can support with that drying technology. Absolutely. Wayne, one thing, I just saw it starting again. We had a print yes. pause. We recommend to, if you do a print pause, to check print quality after about a minute or so to restart the printer. If we don't, it is inkjet technology and we will get ink gain or, or dot gain by the uh, ink sitting on the paper and not dried at that point. So it would cause the, the droplets to spread. So that's why we recommend after a print pause to view print quality, to restart it after about one minute. And then it will uh, start immediately at the point where it stopped with no wasted paper in between. So again, an insurance, if the operator simply forgets to continue printing, the printer will does it by itself. Absolutely, all automatically. We've dried the ink to the paper. This is a blower unit. We're essentially blowing air to cool the sheet even further. And the whole idea of the blower unit is that the paper coming into the first engine is at a certain temperature. And we achieve a certain print quality and 600 by 600 PPI reg registration. We want to make sure that when we send the paper to the second print engine, that the paper is at the same temperature in the second unit as it was in the first unit. And this way we ensure that the print quality on the front is the same as the print quality on the back. Before we send the paper to the second engine, we have a chilled roller here. And this, in conjunction with the blower unit, ensures that the paper temperature 
that comes in to printer one and comes into printer two is the same. In other words, we after the heating process in printer one, we chill it, it, it gets exposed to this chill roller, and the temperature then going into printer two is the same as it is in printer one. And this way we ensure print quality will be the same on the front and on the back. And then we have a 90 degree turn bar that sends the paper to the second engine. And the 90 degree turn bar technology is essentially the same as technology that we've had in our very stream 7,000 and 8,000 family of products for many years. Very reliable, no operator maintenance, um, no adjustments required on the 90 degree turn bar. Thomas, now we come to the output section of Tower 2. Remember, we have a tight web system through the unwinder, through both print engines, but we have a loose web or a slack web output coming out of engine 2. So that means I'm flexible in terms of the post-processing? Absolutely, that's exactly why we have a loose web output coming out of engine 2, so we can attach most existing post-processing devices. And the way we do that, we have a standard universal type 1 interface that allows us two-way communication between a post-processing device and our print engine. Okay, so it can be a rewinder like in this case, it can be a cutter, a folder, Absolutely. you name it. Lots of flexibility, as long as it can communicate via a Type 1 interface, we can connect it to a ColorStream 3500.